Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis, a podcast dedicated to the Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell case. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hey, everybody. We didn't think we would be back on this week, but here we are. Yeah, I totally thought we may do one Sunday night and then Monday and Tuesday, but... Uh, Well, that's not going to happen because Lori waived her right to a preliminary hearing. So what does that mean? It just means that she's pretty much agreeing that they have enough to send her to trial. So she waived that hearing, and uh, there was a very short uh, hearing today where she formally waived her right. Um, We put some pictures up on Twitter. We got some screen grabs and, and cleaned those up. You can uh, see Lori a little bit better, well, a lot better, actually. And uh, what did you think about how she looked? I mean, she's behind a mask, but. Yeah, um, and that was, she's hiding behind that mask. There wasn't nobody sitting at that table. Uh -uh. The the guys were in the way back of the courtroom. She just, I mean, I guess, look, she's probably, I don't know that she's ashamed, but um, she's eating some crow right now because the world didn't end and these charges aren't going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. so what did you think about how she looked? She's starting to uh, look a little rough. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I, I mean, being in prison, I mean, you don't have access to a lot of things. and Right. You don't have access to Botox. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's been in jail since February now. So, you know our math guys. If you've listened to more than one episode, we always talk about how we suck at math. So, <laughs> Uh, we'll see February, March, April, May, June, July, six months. Sorry. I'm a finger counter and there's no shame in that. No. Uh, So six months, she's been in jail half a year now. You know, it seems like yesterday we were just every day. When are they going to arrest her? When are they going to arrest Chad? And now here we are. We've already had, you know, one preliminary hearing and now we're going to trial. Yep. Um, I thought she looked, her eyes looked dead. And I don't mean that in an ugly, like you know, cryptic way, but it was like hopeless. I I mean, that's kind of the word I was. Yeah. I mean, she just looked blank. Her eyes looked empty. Um, they looked red. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you go to our Twitter account, it's at pretty lies alibi. Uh, we, we do, like I said, we have those cleaned up pictures. You can definitely see them a little better. I think, um, she's starting to grasp how serious this is. Yeah, maybe. And we really, at this point, and I know there's some debate about it online, but we really do think Chad may have flipped. I mean, I don't well, see how you can think. I mean, everybody has their own opinion, and we won't know until we get there. But just the line of questioning that prior yeah, went down, mm-hmm. it just seems like they're going to try to pin it on Lori and Alex. Yeah, I think so, too. And um, actually, one of the uh, anchors on one of the legal analysts on court TV, uh, his opinion is maybe even try to implicate Melanie Gibb because of the line of questioning about her relationship with Tylee. Yeah. And I that's I'm sorry. That's just dumb. I, I think that's I think. Well, we're not calling him dumb. No, uh, I'm not calling him dumb. <laughs> no, we're not calling anybody dumb. I'm but just saying that idea. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't think if if the prosecution had any, you know, suspicion, I don't think Melanie Gibb would be testifying for the prosecution. Um, But we don't know. Could it be that Lori turned? I mean, Chad's preliminary was first, so it's easy to assume listening to his lawyer, if you sort of pick out the parts that are suspicious, that maybe it was Chad. But if Lori had went first, when maybe we thought she had flipped. True. Because she flips on everybody at some point in her life. I mean, um, the only person it seems like she hasn't flipped on is Colby. Yeah. Um, But, you know, um, it's it's just, uh, I I, I don't see any, um, she had no hope in her eyes. And I think that that's not just from the charges. Yeah. And her shoulders were still. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to work on a video on that to show her entrance into the courtroom and how she's changed over the past six months. Yeah. I mean, I'll never forget that, um, that appearance where she came in with the, with the makeup and the, it was that first yeah. hearing in Rexburg. Coming from Hawaii. Yeah. And I mean, she almost had like this catwalk strut. 
Yeah, her shoulders are back. And she had that smirk on her face. That picture, I tell you, in our little studio here, it's still a work in progress. I really want to get some pictures of the kids of JJ and Tylee up in here. And um, But the picture where she's walking out of court and she's got her eyes closed and her chin's up in the air and she's got that grin. Yeah. And then Kay is shooting lasers at her with her eyes. Yep. I That picture to me, I don't like it because of Lori, but I love it because of Kay. Oh, yeah. Um, we love Kay's facial expressions. Yeah. Kay is very expressive, and um, I don't think we have to wonder very much what she's thinking. Oh, I know, right? Um, but that picture to me was so powerful. It was just sort of, in the moment, Lori probably just assumed like every other time she's been in trouble with the police in her life, this would go away. Yep, she could talk her way out of it. And so I think she had that cockiness there, maybe eating up the, the attention initially from the press. Yep. But it's just that look from Kay is kind of like, just wait, just wait. I hate you too, but yeah. just wait. Give this a few months. And here we are. I wonder if she's drugged up. I don't know. We've talked about that before. I don't know if, if they're able to have that. Yeah, they do get mental health treatment in, in jail. It's it's just a right you have. Um, I would be curious to know. It's not my right to know, obviously. Um, but that may come in later in the trial, Um if they're going to claim a mental health defense. Yeah. Um, so. What about the names on the um, screens? Yeah. So Judge Eddins referred to her today as Lori Noreen Vallow, a.k.a. Lori Daybell. Now, at the preliminary for Chad this week, his lawyer referred to her as Lori Vallow. Yeah. Now, on the 30th of June, when she had that hearing about, let's see, what was that one about? It wasn't about the streaming because she waived the right to go to that one. Um, There was a hearing on the 30th. I'm sorry. Y'all, I need blood pressure medicine with this case. <laughs> I got There's all, been so many. I really, I'm so bad at math. And like, and then you get these dates and numbers in my head and it's like my eyes go in different directions and I pass out. It's just like, I can't do it. So on the 30th, there was some kind of a hearing. I forgot. And um, so on the screen on the bottom left, there they have her name. And it said Lori Noreen Daybell. So today I noticed on the screen when she was wa waving the preliminary, it said Lori Noreen Vallow. Now the judge still referred to her as Daybell. Yep. Um, Mark Means didn't refer to her as anything that I heard. No. But um, I just really think they flipped. I, I really do. I was waiting on him to say, uh, she wants to be called Vallow. Oh, man. If she would have done that, I would have yeah, fell back in my chair. Been like, yep. That would have been yeah. your confirmation. And we've said so many times, they've got to do it eventually. Yeah. Um, may as well do it now. So but go you got to think, this is her knight in shining armor, as you know, she thinks. <laughs> yeah. And he has possibly turned on um, her. So yeah, she'll be out for blood. And, and do you. Did you notice a change in her voice today? Yeah, there was something a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, and we've tried to get the word the word to describe it, and we've both... I mean, it's almost like in the past, she's tried to really kind of sound like a quiet little mouse that's vulnerable and just innocent. And today, you sort of heard that projection in her voice. It was, yes, I understand. And... For me, it just felt like she was speaking louder and clearer. And, of course, the judge asked her to, but there's a difference. I really, if you go watch the last hearing before this one, which was on the 30th, and I, I still can't tell you what it was for. That uh, was the one where Colby was on there. That's uh, the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. that was for the uh, probable, yeah, that was when she was charged or the charges were upgraded. Yeah. That's right. That was the first blue sweater thing. Yeah, yeah, she had that on today again, by the way. Yep. I guess you don't have anybody bringing her extra clothes. Because he couldn't come. Like, he was in his office, so. Yeah. And, um, which, you know, I, I mean, I get it. It's, it, financially, it probably doesn't make sense for him to come all the way to Rexburg for this. Um, but again, the one thing that stuck out to me today is she's alone. Yep. She's by herself. There's nobody there for her. There were guards waiting to take her back into her jail cell. And I think that's just how it's going to be for her from now on. And you hate to theorize, but it has to be coming clear to her at this point, even if it's just in like the back part of her mind when nobody's around, 
that her life is over. Yeah. Like you can't, she's always wiggled out of everything. Any problem with authorities or courts, she's always sort of got her way. Yep, talked her way out of it. But this time, I just think maybe it's starting to hit home that there's no way out of this and the rest of her life will be behind bars. And we know there will be additional charges at some point, and we'll talk about that at the end. So what are the what are the pros for the defense? Um, you get witnesses on record. So, I mean, it's hard when somebody asks you a question and you answer it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a couple of days later, somebody asks you a question maybe a little bit differently and you answer a little bit differently. Right. So it could be some inconsistent statements mm-hmm. and not saying anybody's lying or anything, but it's, it's, you're in front of a, um, I mean, this coming up, you're going to be in front of a jury and a judge and everybody's watching you on TV. You know what I mean? Right. So, it's much different. Um, so they're going to try to discredit where you've made two statements that were different. Yeah. Um, so. But I think, I think that it's a situation where the FBI and law enforcement, they do this. So they kind of know how to handle a situation like that. I think Melanie Gibb, would have been the one, or David Warwick, um, that I think they would have went after as far yeah. as trying to trip them up a little bit in their answers. But I don't really know that that's going to matter. Yeah, I mean, Melanie's given, what, two or three interviews. Yeah, she's given a, a few. She's, I mean, every one of them, she said the same thing. Right. So I don't even know that that's, like, a really big deal. But I guess if you're going to have to have a preliminary, if she had not waived it, that's obviously one thing they're going to look for when they get both of those transcripts and put them side by side. Yeah. And I'm just throwing this in here real quick. I felt bad for David because obviously he's a little bit hard of hearing, which is not anything abnormal with somebody who's worked in construction. Right. Um, But I felt Pryor was almost doing it on purpose Mm -hmm. because he would back away from his mic. And I, I mean, he may not have, but... I just felt like, you know, I felt bad for David because he he truly couldn't hear him and understand him. So I think it got him kind of frustrated and flustered. Mm-hmm. And then he's asking him all these questions. So, I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. I, I, I did. I don't want to say I felt bad, but I was sympathetic to, yeah. to David. I mean, I, I have friends who are hard of hearing. And on top of that, he may have felt like a little embarrassed that this was going on in front of the world, you know, that he needed it. And and it shouldn't be something you're embarrassed about. If you can't hear, you can't hear. It's not your fault. Um, But I understand the stress. And so I just feel like that um, Chad, you know, Mark means is already going to get the transcript from Chad's hearing. Yep. And he's going to be able to use that at least on several different angles um, to try and start formulating a defense for Lori. Yep. Um, everything that was said, it, it would have been the same stuff. Yeah, I think there may have been a little bit, you know, a couple of things new because you're trying to now you're trying to prove that that the conspiracy on her, right? So I think some of the stuff would have been the same. I think maybe, I mean, possibly maybe some more phone records. I think so because if you think about it, um, the, they didn't even give any for Chad. And so just with the bodies being on its property, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure, you know, and then with the text he sent Tammy Daybell. Yeah. And then you have Alex's cell phone pings. But right now, I haven't seen anything that ties her to concealment or destruction of evidence. And I feel like that part that pertained to her would have been something we probably would have learned on Monday. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, we hopefully we have a trial. I, I, honestly, I don't know. I mean, if it saves Kay and Larry and Colby and everybody... Um, from having to relive this and and hear details and have to see pictures, then maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. I don't see it happen, and I think they'll fight until they're found guilty. Yeah. And that's just on this charge. We've got other stuff coming up. So, uh, you know, courtrooms are going to be very familiar to them in the next few years. I know, right? Yeah. Um, And really, as far as the defense, you know, the one way that that it helps them is that it's the same charges as Chad. She would have been put over for trial anyway. I mean, that was a yeah. formality on Monday. It probably saved her a good bit of money. And we probably think she doesn't have any. I mean, Chad, if they've turned, he was the one that had the money. Yeah. Unless Lori has some money put back we don't know about, but I doubt it. Yeah. 
Um, so he she, keeps saying she's low on funds. So yeah, and I don't know how that works. I mean, I've read some things where when a defendant runs out of money and they've hired a private attorney, that sometimes they can reach a deal where the state pays that attorney what they would pay. Um, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I read this at one point, like years ago, um, that they can pay the attorney that they've retained essentially what they would pay a public defender just to not have to start over. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think I read that years ago. Don't quote me on that. My brain's Yeah, gosh. I have no idea on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what else? Um, we talked a little bit about the joint defense agreement. Yeah, and that would be if they waive the hearing, if they're united. Yeah. And I doubt that. Right now, it doesn't look like it. They could collaborate, you know, starting now on their defenses, but they haven't been named as co-defendants. And, I mean, I just think that there's more of a chance they flip than they're going to be together. We've seen time after time what happens to somebody who goes against what she thinks. Yeah, I mean, they so, they end up either dead or reputations ruined. Yeah. Um, or they end up broke. Yeah. Or both. I mean, yeah. she she broke Joe Ryan in court for years. Yeah, so if that's the road Chad's going down, I, I don't know. I can't see her being a unified front. No, I, I don't think so. I think um I think the minute that she has any any clarity about the severity of all this, then she's gonna she's gonna do what she has to do, which I don't think will ever be successful. But then again, you know, you never know, but if you can get some sympathy and I think at this point she she'll get life without yeah. parole, but I'm sure at this point Mark Means is thinking, well, if I can get life with the possibility of parole in like thirty years. And that's just on this charge, though. I mean, we've got all this other stuff coming. She's never getting out. Yeah. She'll she'll go out when she's deceased. Yeah. She'll die in jail. Yep. Both of them. Hopefully. Uh, I totally agree. So what are some pros for the prosecution? Well, and it's also for the families. I mean, Kay and Larry don't have to sit and hear the same thing again about how the bodies were found. Um, you know, they're going to have to go through this for years. Um, there are going to be many hearings, uh, whether or not they come to every single hearing, you know, you don't know, but they're going to be tied up in court for a very long time. It saves the state money, um, yep. because it's, it's, it's a given she's going over. And then for the prosecution, one of the big things is you don't have the publicity, the extra publicity because it's Lori. So I think maybe you get more viewers when she's at her preliminary. And so the benefit for Wood is that there's some evidence he doesn't have to reveal just yet. Yeah, he can. Uh, yep, keep uh, it in this. Uh, keep it in his pocket. Right, and I think too. It, I mean, there's that we know that Chad's going to file for a change of venue within. I think it was 60 days he had to change. Yeah, he has he within has 60 days. Yeah. I mean, so we know that's coming, but at the same time, if you're if you're going with less publicity, you could argue that maybe it's good because um, potential jurors aren't seeing this this hearing maybe yeah so i i think that probably both sides i would assume are, are pretty happy right now with this decision it it i don't think that a ton would have been gained out of it just two days of of more tri more hearings yeah with a lot of the same information so yeah but i yep. think i think if you take stock of everything i mean we got some news possibly about the investigation in charles today yeah, that was that was good. And I was really, really happy to hear this. But yeah. I, I think the way they said it was great. And I think I know what they're getting at. So this comes, this article here comes from East Idaho News. And I'm going to read it. Um, but I want to say that Nate tweeted this out and put it on his Facebook. So if you want to read the full article, go to East Idaho News' social media sites and it'll be there. Um, but I didn't want to read this out and pretend like I wrote it. Because I did not. I love Nate. Nate is awesome. Him and Eric both. They yeah. are so cool. And we don't know him personally, but do you ever just see people and you think, man, those are like some of the nicest people I don't know. Yeah. I would hang out with them. Oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. They yeah. just seem really like good people. They have good ethics and, you know, Justin Lum. And we have just so many people that we followed throughout all this that have worked so hard. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, we have it. Nate and Eric, they definitely are. They were the first ones that, that I found that were covering this locally. Yep. So on to the article, it says that, um, 
Here it says that police in Arizona will eventually ask prosecutors to file charges against Lori Vallow Daybell in connection to the 2019 homicide of her former husband, Charles Vallow. Chandler Police spokesman, and I'm going to butcher this name, and I'm sorry, Sergeant Jason. You want me to say it? Yes. McClemens. There you go. Good job. Sorry. Sorry. I had a phone call, a a booty (laughs) dial at 630 this morning, and guess who couldn't go back to sleep? That would be me. Ah, at so, least you didn't call me, so that's good. Oh, I should have, just to <laughs> let you feel my pain. <laughs> no. So anyways, um, Jason, what's his name? McClemens. He goes on to say that he, or he confirmed to EastIdahoNews.com that detectives plan to submit their case to the Maricopa County Attorney's Office, but they still have a ways to go on their investigation. They're still in the active search warrant and subpoena phase. So it says that um, the charges against Lori could vary, and they're up to the prosecutor, but police indicate a conspiracy to commit murder charge is possible. And he goes on to say, um, this is actually Chandler Police Detective Nathan Duncan, told East Idaho News that the case is a marathon and not a sprint, and they're conducting a very thorough investigation to determine the truth behind the murder of Charles Vallow. And what stuck out to me homicide and murder is being mentioned and not self-defense. Yep. So I was really happy to hear that. And I think what they're saying to people is quit bugging us. We're on it. But like they they said it could be six months. Yeah. Before they charge her. They're not going anywhere. No. They're not going to get out. No, they're not going anywhere, guys. Are you seeing the same amount of people online freaking out that they're going to get away with this? As yes. I am? Yeah, I do. I do. And I'm like, they're not getting out. No, I mean, th- Chad Daybell had two kids' bodies in his yard, and they're Lori's kids. They have no money to get out. They're not going to get out. No. But no. you know what I was thinking about is this had to be a, a very happy day in some regards for Cheryl Wheeler, his ex-wife, and his sons. Yeah. Because we've always said that, you know, they're victims of Lori, too, and... Um, they seem like really nice boys. I think they're still friends with Colby. Maybe I've seen, uh, they were at his wedding. Yeah. Um, but we forget about those victims as well because it's such a long list. It's a long list, but you look at the number of people that have been impacted by Chad and Lori and Alex. Yeah. It's, it's just a huge number. I mean, do you have boys that don't have a father? Yep. Um, you know, he won't get to see them get married, have kids, live their lives as adults. Yeah, who didn't deserve any of that. No. And um, so I hope that they feel a little bit of relief today. I know it made me feel good to know that they're they're really trying to find justice for Charles. Yeah. Because we all know that stunk to high heaven. Yeah. And that was not uh, even self-defense. Okay. My favorite thing about that is when, I don't forget who was interviewing Kay and Larry, and they both said no. We that was an ambush. We knew that was an ambush from the get go. Yeah, I, I'm um, sure everybody who knew Charles personally, you yeah. know, probably knew that was way out of line, especially with JJ there. Yeah, it, I mean, Charles looked like he adored JJ, and you know, one thing that stuck out to me in that what's that that I thought was just crazy. Lori tries to advise him of what JJ eats, oh, and yeah. I'm thinking he's been around him just as much as you. And I know Charles traveled. But still, I think he would know what JJ eats and likes to eat. So that was like I didn't I didn't hear that. What was yeah? She, she was saying he wanted um, the chicken fries from Burger King. That oh. he had to have chicken fries, and I forget what the drink was or oh, whatever. Okay. But and I thought, why are you telling? Like he knows. Yeah, you know. So well. Anyways, I, I mean, so for us, in a selfish way, we were sort of bummed when it was canceled. But thinking about it. It would have been a lot of the same. And um, I'm happy that the families and, and everybody who testified can take a break yeah. and get ready. Now, the big question for me is, and I don't know the answer to this, if they upgrade to murder charges or conspiracy to commit murder, does this trial still go on or does it become a package deal? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to try to find out that answer. But I, so, I mean, other than housekeeping stuff or motions that are – you know, definitely going to come up. We're in it for the long haul now, as far as like actual hearings. Yeah. You'll have the, pro- I don't know. Uh, well, I guess when the murder charges come, you'll have probable cause hearings for those. Uh, I would think so. But as far as, you know, any kind of finality is going to be a very, very long time. So a little bit of news on Melanie Pulaski, who is 
we think due to give birth soon. Yep. Maybe in the next month or so. Um, we routinely kind of look at the the court website for her custody hearing. We'll brand it to see if there's been any motions filed. And there was a motion for contempt filed on um, August the 4th. Yeah. And we don't know on who because it doesn't say, but. I think if maybe we put two and two together, the last thing that was ordered in their case was a psychiatric evaluation for Melanie. So it could potentially be that she didn't abide by what the court ordered of her. Um, it was a pretty tight time frame. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I guess you could get an appointment quick on that. Yeah. Well, and they're going to have to, I mean, she's, she's going to give birth soon. And I, I kind of thought they would get her before she had that baby. Yeah. Um, but I guess that remains to be seen. But in just thinking about it, you would think that her attorney would have so many days to respond to that order. Yeah, I don't. So I, don't I don't. I don't know what it is. Maybe it'll come out in the next few days. What? Um, I what mean, that's all about. Maybe she tried to file contempt charges against Brandon, but you know, Brandon seems like a pretty straight laced guy and um, definitely has his kids' best interests at heart. Unlike the other half of the parent. Yeah, I mean, um, he's been following the rules. He has. I mean, I, yeah. I have so much respect for Brandon. Yeah. Um, the way he has been strong for Kay and Larry when they needed it. Um, clearly, when he had to identify JJ yeah. through the photo. And, um, you know, he seems like a, a wonderful dad. Beautiful kids. And um, I've seen some pictures of him with his kids. And it, it, he just looks like a proud daddy. Yeah. And he's remarried now. He got remarried just a short while ago so hopefully that's given him some normalcy in the midst of this chaos because their case is still you know just moving forward yep but i guess a lot of that case depends too on i think they're not due back in court about this till november yeah i think so so unless she gets arrested between now and november um and i guess if she gets arrested for a you know conspiracy to commit murder um he doesn't have to worry about custody true and then he can hopefully move on with his life and, and be happy and have some normalcy after some crazy, what, year and a half. Yeah. But then, you, you know, the kids, this has to affect them. Well, yeah, because um, they don't, uh, they probably don't understand the scope of what's going on. All they know is like mom's not here anymore. And then the last time probably that they saw their mom, she was getting arrested. I don't know if they arrested her on scene there. I guess they would, but. You know, you remember the 911 call with Brandon's dad. Yep. And she's outside, and he is terrified because Alex is there. And at this point, they pretty much know Alex probably tried to shoot him. Yeah. Shoot Brandon. And it, he was in the, they were in the garage. So. Yeah. I mean, um, so hopefully that family can find some, hopefully all these families can just have a nice little breather. And, you know, it's so important for Kay and Larry to, to be able to grieve for these kids. And for Colby to be able to grieve for these kids. And um, maybe now uh, Chad's arraignment's the 21st. But mm, probably nothing major right now as far as lengthy hearings. So hopefully everybody's just taking a break and, and dealing with, with themselves. Yeah, I I've, I thought a little bit about uh, Adam, Lori's brother. Uh, when we, Monday or Tuesday, I don't know what day it was, we heard the, um, the police... Uh, uh, camera footage we got to hear the audio and she's accusing him of trying to kill her so I'm like you know here's this guy he's clearly doesn't have a lot to do with his family it doesn't seem like and he's you know I think he lives in Kansas or somewhere and now he's you know that's Zach's dad the one Zach who lived um, yeah, his, he's really funny with his comments. I love reading Zach's comments. He just tells it like it is. Yeah. He does not hold back. Yeah, so his dad, Adam, so now she's said in there, oh, he's trying to kill me. Um, so, you know, it's just crazy. Everybody's out to get Lori. Meanwhile, I, she's killing everybody. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody's out to get her her whole life, but, you know, yeah. look at the bodies in her path. Yep. Yeah. Hey, did you happen to catch the Melanie Gibb, Nate thing this morning? I did not. After we talked on the phone when that was posted on Miss Cushing's Twitter, um, I was like, it makes sense if they do it. And you're like, no, nah, man, that, 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 I think that maybe they're going to do it. And then I said, oh, maybe they'll, maybe they'll cancel it. And then I took my daughter to the orthodontist. And I'm literally sitting in the parking lot because they won't let me go in right now because of COVID. And I'm, I'm, you know, jamming out to some Pink Floyd and I'm just chilling. And then 
I see that red East Idaho news alert come on my phone and I see Lori Vallow. Yeah. And I, I, I was like, oh, what is this? And then it says, you know, she's waived her Wait. right to a preliminary. Yeah. As, as soon as I got that, like <laughs> I was showing my mom, um, she's interested in this case. So I was sharing with her the Nate, Melanie Gibb, in, like the little thing they did uh, this morning. And as soon as it went off, I looked at her and said, you're going to have to hold on a second because my phone's getting ready to ring. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And it, it was, was. It, it was, was you. It was me. <laughs> yep. Well, we haven't talked much in two days. I mean, I've been taking care of my kids. You've been taking care of your family. I haven't seen you. I haven't really talked to you much. And then all of a sudden a day with this, it's like text, text, call, call. Yeah. Can you come over? Let's do a quick podcast. And you had plans. And then I had to cook for everybody. And you yeah. said those tacos were they good. They were good. You- they were good. Fruit Loop had some leftovers when she came over. There you yeah, go. Yeah, I can't cook were. much, but I can cook some tacos. But they gave me the hiccups, so. I know, right? We didn't think we'd be able to go on for a few minutes. Yeah, I'm a, uh, if you ever get hiccups and you can do this, uh, it really works. I've been doing it since I was a kid. So I get like massive hiccups. So it's like, you know, tear the house down, massive hiccups. Oh, I don't even know what kind of noise you were yeah, making over there, but yeah. I thought you were dying. No, yeah. Yeah. So the only thing that will stop my hiccups is peanut butter. Yeah, I, I've tried that. So you take a little bit of peanut butter on a spoon, eat it, and it stops it. It stops my hiccups. Yeah, so. it, it sounded like a I don't know. So, yeah, sound like an animal over there in some distress. Exactly. So, anyways, back to the <laughs> Melanie Gibney so thing. So, back to my story. Real oh quick. yeah, go ahead. I didn't read the story because I was too busy on top of all this about the preliminary. I wanted to, but you're going to tell us about it. Gotcha, gotcha. So he did a little mini interview. It was a video. You can go to East Idaho News and and catch it on Nate's uh, on that page. But um, so he kind of asked her a few questions, and uh, she talked a little bit about. Um, she loved being able to meet and talk to Kay and Larry um, and kind of form that relationship. Uh, and um, she shared a little bit about, he asked her, he said, a lot of people have asked why you didn't come forward, why you didn't, um, you know, when you heard Lori referring to, to the kids as zombies, why didn't you do something? And she had a, a great uh, explanation. Um, she said that Lori and Chad always made predictions and always said things and it never happened. Well, yeah, because they can't predict nothing. Exactly. Um, She said that they never mentioned at all about killing anybody and that um, they would, they would talk about praying and hoping that the spirits would leave the body. So it was all about prayer um, and then, of course, she got into the dates, which she kind of explained she had never heard the July 22nd date, um, that it was always August, and it wasn't really a end-of-the-world type thing. It was more of there's going to be a transition where things will just change and be different and, and stuff like that. Well, they nailed that, just not in the way they thought. Yeah. Different, like, we're in jail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, um, so it was kind of cool. And the last thing um, he asked her, uh, he what he said, he asked her what she would say to, um, to Chad and Lori. And she said, what was you going to say while I'm finding this real quick? Because I don't want to mess it up. Oh no, I was just saying, I was just going to say that I I've thought a lot about Melanie Gibb in the last couple of days and her testimony, and you know I've defended Melanie Gibb a little bit on some of the Facebook groups when I was more active on those. Um, I just feel like maybe people sometimes, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, I feel like maybe sometimes people put too much responsibility on her just because she was there the night JJ passed away. I mean, like she was saying, essentially, um, I I know Charles and Tammy had died, and I get that, but they never talked about murdering them. And you have to understand, Melanie believed that they could predict things. So we're not saying that Melanie was thinking like you and I would think. Yeah. So I just, um, in some ways, I feel like Melanie Gibbs sort of has become the go-to for everybody, but there's so much there's so many situations where the, the ball was dropped. And I, I'm, I think part of that's being righted right now in, in what Gilbert, Arizona investigating. Yeah. I mean, yeah. cause if you think about it, 
Um, and I look, law enforcement's human. And yeah, they can't go back and change anything. They make mistakes. But honestly, if they'd investigated this a little further, I think Lori and Chad both would have been in jail. Yep. And I'm not trying to like diss anybody. Um, but there's a lot of blame that can go around if we want to look hard enough. And so I, I think that if Kay and Larry feel comfortable and they're grateful to Melanie, um, I think that speaks volumes. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, Larry said from the get go, when they found the bodies on the property, he was standing out there and he was crying and he said, I just want to be a peacemaker. Right. And I, there, there doesn't need to be any more drama associated with this case. No. And I understand people's stance on why they may not prefer Melanie Gibb, but I just feel like the, the ball was dropped so many times to single her out. She wasn't even living in the same city with them. Yeah. And yeah. then beyond that, yeah, we know she told the lie, but... I mean, Fruit Loop, if I, t- if I called you and, and we're best friends and I said, hey, can you tell the cops that, you know, Taylor Mason or Sarah Rose are with you? Yeah, I would have no reason to think you would harm them in any way. Right. Um, so I just, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to start a debate with anybody or, or anything. I sure. just feel like everybody's made mistakes in this case. Yep. And um, she made a big one when she did that. But I've just never felt like Melanie Gibb had any evil intent at any point. Really gullible with this whole Chad and Lori thing and their visions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we don't think that way. Like, for us on the outside looking in, it just looks, how can you even believe that? But mm. we've done research on how people can become convinced super easily about things that are just out there. Yeah. And um, so, anyways, that's all I was going to say. Sorry. I oh, just, that's all right. um, but her last, her comment of what she would say to Lori and Chad, like, this is just a little piece of it. And again, you can go on Nate's page and they have all this article. But uh, she says, at some point, you're going to have to come to the realization that you can't live in this pretend bubble. It has to pop eventually because they're not going to come out of jail. They're going to be there for the rest of their lives. So she was saying, you know, eventually they've got to realize what they did was wrong. Yeah. And it was evil. Yeah, it was. I think that's happening maybe on a small scale. Um, I mean, because at this point, I, I just, they've been apart longer than they were married. You know, they were in Hawaii a few months um, after they got married, but she's been in jail six months. Yep. So, yeah, they spent a year together hanging out and planning all this, but things go south. She's locked up a lot, you know, way before he was. So, at what point? Will it break if it hasn't already? I guess we'll see. Um, but we, we'll definitely keep an eye on things. We'll do podcasts on a regular basis. There's so much to still talk about in this case. But um, just not Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, well. Yep. My kids were really excited. They were like, can we go to the beach house? Yeah. Let's get back to the beach. Because <laughs> I told them, I said, Monday, Tuesday, like, do not come in that studio unless you are bleeding out. <laughs> Yeah. Or the house is on fire. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're cool about it. But, yeah, so they're like, hey, can we go to the beach house? Yeah. So, um, anyways, I think that's kind of all we have for today. Um, just a little bit of news here and there. And and uh, the big news, obviously, with with the no preliminary hearing. But I think we'll hear some news um, at some point about upgraded charges. And and then, the, you know, this will this will seem... Kind of like a smaller charge, obviously, when yeah. you start getting into murder stuff. But and if you've got any questions, uh, yeah, she just on Twitter. Yeah, let us know, and we can research and do some stuff. And we're going to be doing that anyways. But yeah, if you have um, anything you want us to research, uh, reach out on social media. Let us know. I mean, some of our some of the funnest things we've researched have just been ideas from the listeners. Sure. Um, and uh, so I think maybe for me, I'll take a break for a few days from this case. Yeah, just um, get a breather. Yeah. Those two days, that was rough. Yeah, I think I'm going to take my kids maybe hiking tomorrow. Yeah. Go go get out and get in the... Uh, it's hot. It's so hot. Yeah. Y'all, it's so hot here. Yeah, I'm I'm not... I hike. That's part of my ministry, and we choose not to hike in the summer. Yeah, I don't um, hike a ton. I have a really bad knee, um, and I'm a little scared of snakes, you guys. I, I, oh, yeah, I'm really <laughs> scared of snakes. I got bit by one last week, you so just it's gotta like let them crawl. I, let snakes them crawl. and bears. Nah, uh, uh-uh. uh. 
I'll yeah. jump off the side of a mountain before I'll get close to a snake. <laughs> Not even kidding. I still got bite marks on my hand, guys. That thing. I, every night I go to bed, I see his little face looking at me and just that mouth open. It was like very, it reminded me of Harry Potter. I promise you this, I'm going to get Sarah to put a snake in your bed. I promise you it's going to happen. Fruit then <laughs> almost 30 years of best friends. I'm going to send you packets. <laughs> the podcast is going to end <laughs> when yeah. you get the, the snake in the bed. Oh, my gosh. Um, we also have this little, um, it's, it's one of those heads that you use in cosmetology school. And that thing is spooky. It's freaky. So it's just a freestanding little, you can go online and see them. And so we put it in the most random places my kids and I'll put it in the refrigerator so when my daughter goes to get her breakfast the head's in there and you yeah. just hear you know it was waiting. in my car the other night when I went out to get in the car I know right so uh mm-hmm. don't put anything past me because uh we prank each other sometimes <laughs> and um I'll get these gears turning and get you good but yeah. I always tell my daughter because she she likes to hang out beside the doors and jump out and scare me and Fruit Loop and I'm like we're in we're our old. 40s this is like heart attack stuff now it's not you know we jump and laugh yeah, yeah I'm going to fall over one day, but yeah, so, um, but thanks a lot for uh, following us um, the past week. It's been a busy week, and we'll be here uh, if anything new comes up. I'm still watching this this page for Melanie. I'm still watching the page for uh, Lori and Chad. Anytime anything is uploaded, I get an alert on my phone, so we'll, we'll let you know if anything changes. Yeah. Um, but the next big thing right now is the 21st of August, uh, 9 a.m., their time, 11 Eastern. That'll be the arraignment. It shouldn't be super long. Yeah. Um, but that'll be it. And then, like I said, just shoot us some ideas if you want. Otherwise, we'll just start cranking out some stuff, and, and we will see you guys back here soon. Have a great rest of your week. Yep. I'm going to go prank her. Nope. <laughs>